Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. The first scripture today is from Psalm 147. The psalm begins with hallelujah and also ends with hallelujah. <laughs> oh, someone say hallelujah. <laughs> Scholars put this psalm with other four psalms into the same collections as a psalm of praise to God. Those five psalms are used for daily morning service and meditations to praise the kingship of God. From the context of Psalm 147, we can tell it, it was composed after the Israelites were allowed to return to their homeland and the temple in Jerusalem was rebuilt under the permission and assistance of the Persian Empire. It's hard to imagine that what failed to be captured be removed from their homeland and relocated to a foreign country for years and now come back to the place most of people never live in. However, the vision here is real. The Zion, the city of David, the house of God, the temple in Jerusalem are now restored and the people reunited together and worshiped together there. And after the war surrounds Jerusalem was rebuilt as long as the temple, the law and policing enforcement from the Persian Empire come to the city. So the city is now a safer place and quote unquote, the peace is finally here under another empire's power. If you read this scripture closely, we might also notice that God is described it as the creator of the whole world and the nature. God is the rhythm of the world, good and bad, and the logic and the regulation behind everything. The psalm concludes with, He, God, Adonai, Adonai, declare his word to Jacob, his status and his judgment to Israel. He, God, Adonai, Adonai, has not done so to any other nation. To them, he has not revealed his judgments. It shows that only Jacob, who was given a new name as Israel by God in the book of Genesis, he and his country, was the only one and unique one favor selections among many. And only Jacob knew the secret, the secret of God's world, status, and judgment. It implies that a superior guide is reserved for Israel only. It's not difficult to understand why Israelites have this understanding of God, especially after they have all experiences separated from their homeland, being captured, invented for other countries, and now going home. By reviewing their experience for all this over the generations, they figured out that God was what, what God was and will be. They felt the time of God's promise had come. Today is also the New Year's Eve. According to this uh, Gregorian calendar, it indicates another transition of time from the year 2023 to year 2024. How many of us receive email or letters from various organizations that mentioned what they have accomplished in 2023 and ask for the very last minute donation and support in our mailbox? Raise your hand. I have even yesterday afternoon. <laughs> well, so our church is going to do the same thing, all right, to ask for everyone for more financial support and all the participations in our ministry. And we, we will have our reasons behind that. So we should not be surprised when we receive those mails or messages. And some might also receive postcards from our friends or family members. They would like to, uh, to know what they have experienced this year, 
what the kids are doing now and what their future plans are. I do, and it is now a tradition at this time of year. In those letters, most of them come with this arrangement like the following. Greetings, the long royal supporter of our organizations. Since the organizations have started, this is the most amazing years. The third part will be, we have planned, and this is the result of the this year and our financial status and numbers that my board, those who receive this later, but they have tried very hard to make those numbers very interesting to us and try to understand each penny was spent on which subject and will use a very gentle and lovely manner to ask for more support, including sending more money and subscribing to their next season's ticket and the vision of several impact, impactful things we can do together in the following year. And finally, appreciations and blessings in the end of the letter. Is that right? The, almost the mail we receive in our mailbox. It's an, interest, it's an interesting structure. And what do you think about the, fi the first five books in the Hebrew Bible? The first book, Genesis talking about the origins of a group of people and about God's creations and their identity of the first people. And as it does, the crisis of God's people and the way they work them out. The leaf cuckers, what are the regulations for a community in honor of God and our identity? A book of numbers, yes, the numbers. Just like most of people will skip and skip that section and never want to read that again. In Deuteronomy, the amend, uh, amendment to the regulations and what has happened to this group of people and the history of that. And they were promised a promised thing for the future. Those life experience reflect in Torah, the first five books in the Hebrew Bible, are important for the Hebrew people. They are reminded and mentioned to the readers of Psalm 147, the scripture we read today. Torah, the regulations and requests from God of Israel, still speak to the Hebrew people now and then. It's unique for them. As for us, as a gathering of Christians, we might have slightly different viewpoints and the story to tell. As a tradition of New Year's Eve, it's about the time to review our lives and our church ministries. What do you want to say in a letter that you are going to send out? Some of us are drafting a committee report for the upcoming congregational meeting in February. It's not easy, right? Address, <laughs> addressing the community report. We might have the similar experience. We had fears. We have doubts in our journey so far. Some might question God's intention behind all these challenges, including a little cold in our sanctuary this morning. What's going on here? And other my questions, is there a God behind all of this? To praise God in the midst of nowhere is quite difficult. Think, think about Moses and those 40 years in the desert on their way from Egypt to the Promised Land. Uh, but isn't there anything that we can recognize as a guide of God in our midst and ensure ourselves to keep walking toward the destinations that God promised to us based on the fact and evidence we have collected and found? What items, incidents, events, acti activities, and the numbers would you like to include it in the letter or to send out to your family, friends, and our congregation? Last Sunday, we celebrate our Savior, Jesus Christ, had a family come. The church traditions spend four to five weeks preparing ourselves for that moment. And then from today, it will be another transition 
of the church season from Christmas and Advent to post-Christmas time. The focus is moving from the baby Jesus to the broad and the more comprehensive understanding of the Christian community. Here comes the second scripture we read today, Galatians. One of the challenges in Paul's ministry was a conflict between the Jewish and the Gentile Christians. They were worshiping in the same worshiping community under the same roof. For the Jewish, uh, Jesus worshipers, the Torah was part of their identity, especially for those male worshipers. To circumcise is, many, is, many, is a major identity vital to them. They both represent the covenant with God and the relationship of belonging. However, for those non-Jewish or Gentile Christians, the Torah was never on their radar. Not following the regulations of Lord in the Torah should not be a punishable disobedience. But now there are two groups of people under the same roof. Paul was forced, if you put it this way, to interpret the Torah and bring new meanings to this new community. Paul advocates by, fo- by faith. We are no longer in prison and is guarded under the Lord. The law is no longer our Presbyterians, and we are no longer subject to it. And now the, fo- the, fo- uh, the fullness of time had come. The Son of God has been born. Through the Holy Spirit, we can call God Abba Father, and we are adopted as sons and heirs of God. This interpretation broke the barriers of the Torah, which is only restricted to merely Jewish Hebrew people who are the only selected people and race to receive the salvation. The mercy and redemption from God are now in Paul's writings, not only given to Jewish Hebrew people, but also to the non-Jews and Gentiles. People use this standard language in the Roman Empire that adoptions could be used to gain the same identity, social status, and benefits. Just as Caesar, Julius Caesar adopted his nephew, Octavian, Augustus, the Roman Empire when Jesus was born as his son and heir. He was very famous in the first century. You saw the way Paul used here to expand God's ministries across the boundaries of race, gender, and social status. It sounds great, sounds so great. No longer free or slave, no longer man or woman. But now, how about the Torah? Is Torah still important by all means? Maybe for some Christians, there is still a misunderstanding about the Torah. After the Reformation in the 16th century, Christians' good words should not be a factor in their salvation, and only their faith would count. So la fide, by faith alone, becomes the most important difference between our understanding of Judaism and Catholicism. The old, quote-unquote, old Protestant perspective claimed that Paul advocated justification through faith in Jesus Christ over the ju- justification through works of the law and Torah. The Catholic Church behaved just like the Jews who tried to earn their salvation through works of their doings, such as selling and purchasing indulgence. However, the biblical scholars and theologians ch- challenge this presupposition. Since the 1970s, the movement of the new perspective on Paul was provided, has provided us with a different understanding of by faith and justifications, redemptions in Paul's writing. Christ, uh, Christ's sandals at parish centers and James Dunn are some influential thinkers on this matter. By reviewing Paul's writings, 
his background as a Jew and a well-trained, educated Pharisee, his ministry in the Jewish community, especially in Jerusalem, and the mixed-race, new worshiping community, and the writing from the Jewish traditions. This scholar believed in, Paul's, uh, in Paul and in Judaism. The concepts of redemption was not earned by obedience to Torah or any regulations, or earned by following ethical requests. Egoistic righteousness or earning by doing is a common misunderstanding of Judaism, and it was not what Paul tried to accomplish in the first century. The parallel between Martin Luther versus the uh, Catholic Church in the 16th century and the Paul versus legalistic Jews in Judaism in the first century is inappropriate in any way. Unfortunately, the misunderstanding still dominates amongst the Protestant Christian church and Christians. The new perspective on Paul reminds us that Judaism relies on the mercy and the covenant of God, and obedience to Torah and the law express the involvement of the covenant and salvation. On the other hand, obedience to Torah, the law, is not the mean to earn salvation. What Paul tried to do is to shift and expand from being in covenant to being in Christ, from through flesh, the body mark, and connection with real Jew Jewishness to all who remaining in Christ. Therefore, the barriers of racist Torah and restricted salvation, mercy, or redemption of God were broken and now shared with all believers. It's very common in Paul's writing. The reading today in Galatians chapter 3, postponed dead and then teen pistin, from now before faith came. T pistin could be translated the face by face, someone's face to God, or even God's faithfulness. This scripture could also translate into now before the faithfulness of God come. Paul used the same scripture in other writings as well. For example, in the book of Romans, Paul writes, the one who is righteous will live by faith. The one who is righteous through faith will live. This scripture is a direct quote from the Hebrew Bible from prophet Habakkuk, chapter two, verse four. But the righteous man is rewarded with life for his fidelity. Paul gives a more straightforward meaning in his writing. In Galatians' context, faith is between, faith is a newborn Jesus, the promise from God to the whole world. So we can sing the joy to the whole world. The entire world is waiting for the fulfillment, fulfillment of God's faithfulness, the time of salvation and redemption. Therefore, in Paul's heart, neither the good doing of a person nor your belief in Jesus Christ could earn you salvation or redemption. It's God's promise and mercy alone that makes salvation possible. Sola fide by God's, fulfill Sola fide by God's faithfulness alone is the only key to our redemption and salvation. This review and the new perspective on Paul transformed most of the mainline denomination since 1980s, such as accepting infant baptism. This sacrament is justified without the consent of the individual and the receiver, and an open, inclusive communion table for all people. Because it's God's faithfulness makes all of this possible and meaningful, and we human beings and we all other creations are invited to witness and participate in it. One of the missions and the ministries of the church, Christian church 
was shifted from Christian-centric doing to finding those outsiders, introducing the unconditional love, and forming a new family of faith with diverse background and social status. It's not an individualism that can dominate the Christian community, but the, the whole world, the, the wholeness, the solo concern of Jesus Christ and his followers. For us, the, the full, uh, fullness of time had come. Our celebration last week is one of evidence in our review. We enjoyed the Christmas carols and cookies and knew the Savior has been born. We keep providing open breakfast and sandwich to the night ministry. Since uh, July this year, our open breakfast has served more than 120 guests. In 2023, we have delivered 1,075 sandwiches to the night ministry for the people who we need. We do not only do the fund ourselves alone, but churches in Nazareth and in the city across Israel and the West Bank have canceled their public celebrations of Christmas this year against the black, the back, against the, the uh, against the backdrop of the bloodshed in Gaza and Israel, including the Christian leaders in Jerusalem and Bethlehem, they call off the celebration of any kind. We are reminded that the humble and the harsh circumstances into which Jesus was born now and then is still continue there. The peace is coming, but not yet. Today is a New Year's Eve, a time for reviewing and moving forward. Therefore, we have a special treat today. We have our special um, guest pianist, and found and our special soloist Peter Kong with us today. Our musician will perform the anthem in German, and you, you can find the, the lyrics in your bulletin today. The title of the anthem is Van Guten Machen Wanderbad Goborgen in German, and by Gentle Power in English. The lyrics are from one of the important Lutheran uh, theologians in Germany, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, written in 1944, several months before he died. He was executed by the Nazi, Nazi uh, German government two weeks before Germany's surrender. During World War II, the National Church of Germany swore to the government, which was led by the Nazi Germany government, and the church obeyed under the leadership of Ad Adolf Hitler without a second thought. They believe that the church is, is to serve the government, and before the new order comes to the world, there must be certain chaos and suffering, which manifested in the European world. The national church became the backbone of Nazi Germany. Nazi Germany in a certain way. However, at that time, a tiny group of Christians disagree with that status. They call themselves the Confession Church, that in opposition to the government-sponsored effort to unify all Protestant churches into a single pro-Nazi German evangelical church. They are a symbol of anti-fascism, Dietrich Benhofer was one of them. He has been in jail for 18 months when he wrote his lyrics. Imagine his contact. His friends and colleagues were either arrested or killed or fled away to foreign countries such as the United States. Some of his friends in the same jail disappeared one by one. None knew when where all this ridiculous would come to an end. At that very moment, on the eve of the uncertainty and the new year, Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote these following words. 
surrounded by such true and gentle power, so wondrously consoled and without fear. Thus, I will spend these final hours and then together enter a new year. By gentle powers, lovingly surrounded, with patience we will endure. They come what may. God is with us at night and in the morning, and certainly on every future day. This is the, ver- is the first verse of the anthem today. There will be four verses in Peter's performance today. Let us take this opportunity to meditate, to review our personal life, our congregational life, our countries and global community this year. May we all be sure that although the cup was heavy, God's light shines in the night. Amen. I invite the musician. The lyrics in your bulletin. <laughs> 